Learning Framework video. This is a short video, five or 10 minutes. I'm not gonna go into great detail for any of these points, but I'm gonna brush over a bunch of different things and then we'll cover things in greater detail as we move through the course. The idea behind this course is that you have a roadmap or a map that helps you think about each module in the course and put it together into a big, huge picture. So the way this picture kind of works is you start here in the upper left where it says specific claim, then you move on to the scales and then sort of along these arrows down here to kind of evidence. And then this little bit right here in the middle is a rabbit hole, the rabbit hole of logic. We cover that in um, module three, logic. Um, and we do it by using mod, um, Alice in Wonderland and monsters to talk about logic. It turns out, both Monsters and Alice in Wonderland are, are really useful in terms of explaining logical concepts. Um, so then we kind of get down here to some bedrock principles, um, and then we conclude with a determination whether or not a claim has met a burden of proof. So let, let me just kind of zoom in a little bit, and I'll chat about each one of these things. Again, don't worry too much about each and every one of them making total sense. It's just a broad overview. So, um, the first thing that you need to think about, sorry, as a critical thinker is to ask yourself, what is it that someone is saying? Um, have they said something that actually means something or does it just sound that way? Um, very often people try to sound profound, but they don't really, um, mean anything at all. Uh, is at a there's a website that can generate these sorts of things cpierce.com I have no idea I just googled it but they're great right so here's one of them um, the complexity of the present time seems to demand a maturing of our lives if we are going to survive well I mean, what, what is even going on here right I mean complexity of the present time I mean People have always thought that the times that they live in are in some sense complex. Nobody goes, you know, things are pretty simple right now. Whether you're talking about the Spanish Inquisition or the foundation of Chinese civilization, I mean, times are generally complex in the same way that they can be simple. It's a vague term. It doesn't really say anything. And so, um, you know, and then you look at something like seems to demand a maturing of our lives if we are going to survive. Uh, wh what is even happening here? You know, are we talking about anything at all? Couldn't you be totally immature and still survive? Um, it's just a general blah statement that doesn't really mean anything. And so when somebody says something, you need to be careful that they're saying something that can be true or false or has some concrete connection. Now, it's not to say poetry is bad news or anything like that, but you need to be mindful that the sorts of things that people say sound really good, but when you dig underneath the surface, sometimes somebody's not saying anything at all. Um, another important thing to look at is whether somebody is saying something that is their opinion or whether it's a fact. So Professor Vitt might say, Kobe Bryant is the greatest basketball player of all time. Well, I mean, greatest, normally people say Michael Jordan, but have we defined? the specific truth conditions for the term greatest? In other words, have we all agreed on what sorts of things would make someone the greatest? No, we clearly haven't. Um, additionally, you wanna ask about, you know, what kind of source is giving me this information? If you wanna know about math, go to a math professor. If you have a question about political science, well, a political science, or politics, a political science professor might be a good place to start. It doesn't mean that they're the end all. There cannot be one particular source that will give you absolutely everything you need, generally, right? But you need to think about, in addition to what something is saying, right? What is being said, the content, you need to think about the form. How is it being said? Um, that's super important. Um, Next up, you need to ask, is the claim being made extraordinary? Is somebody saying something that's super rare or breaks the laws of nature? So for example, if I said to you, um, oh, Professor Vitt, 
um, walks to school every day. Well, that might not be too crazy. You might think, well, do you live in Lakewood or something? Or do you live by the PCC campus? You know, um, or do you walk from the Inland Empire every day? If I said I walked 50 miles every day, well, that would be unlikely. Um, you'd want some more evidence rather than just believing what I say. And so be mindful when somebody says something, ask yourself, is that claim extraordinary? Is it contrary to maybe what we know is true about the world? If so, the evidence that they give us must also be balanced out. The shortcut for this, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Um, all right, another thing that you would need to ask is when someone is trying to make a point, argue a position, um, you need to inquire as to how good the logic is that they're using. In other words, how tight is the connection between what they're trying to show, the conclusion, and the premises, uh, the reasons that they have for thinking that something is true. The tighter the connection between the reasons that someone has and the conclusion that they're trying to reach, the more likely it is that the, that's going to be true. Um, uh, so remember here, I, I talk here quite a bit about the kind of evidence that certain claims require. And the idea is that um, as your claims get crazier, you need crazier evidence to support them. Um, now, when you've kind of got all that evidence wrapped up together, maybe in a burrito or something, you need to then stop and apply a couple of rules. Uh, one of them is Occam's razor, right? What's the simplest explanation? I'll cover this in the what and why section, but think about it this way. Suppose I'm camping in the woods and um, I see something bushling, you know, around, it's night, and to me, I think it's the chupacabra. And I say, oh my gosh, I couldn't quite see it in the dark, but I think I just saw a chupacabra. And my wife says, you're crazy, you know? I mean, look, we don't even know if chupacabras actually exist, but we know that there are a heck of a lot of raccoons out here. So all of the things being equal, the simplest explanation is that you saw a raccoon that you thought was a chupacabra. That's what Occam's razor is. Um, it's named after a, a um, medieval sort of philosopher, logician, um, and he doesn't actually ever state the claim, but he uses it um, repeatedly. It's sort of a backbone of his work. The other thing that we'll look at is something called a reductio ad absurdum. Um, if someone makes a claim, then you want to push that claim all the way and see whether or not there are any ridiculous results that occur. Um, it's kind of like uh, Wile E. Coyote, you know. Um, have you ever seen cartoons where something gets pushed off of a cliff and then the person who's pushed off the cliff all of a sudden realizes they're not standing on anything and it falls down, they fall down? That's what a reductio ad absurdum is. If somebody wants to prove something, they'll give you reasons for thinking that thing. Um, what you do is you assume that those reasons are true and then you prove something that's way too strong than they had originally intended. So you might do something like, suppose somebody says um, that we never went to the moon. Um, then uh, you've got a problem, right? They say, well, the moon was orchestrated by the United States, uh, was filmed or something like that in a sound stage. Um, what, what, um, well, what would have to be true? Well, there are instruments up on the moon that were used for, for many, 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 many years um, to measure tides and to help to predict um, tides. And so if it's true that we never went to the moon, then someone would have had to have gotten material up there that would then relay information to Earth that would then be accurately be used to, um, to predict tides. And the scientists using that data and getting that information would have never known. I mean, it just, it doesn't seem plausible. Um, there are lots of other examples of this sort of thing. We'll get to it later. Um, but that's the general idea. Now, the next and the bottom part of this here um, kind of looks a little bit like a Ouija board. Um, it has a teapot. And this teapot is um, uh, from something known as Russell's Teapot. And Russell's Teapot 
comes from a philosopher named Bertrand Russell. And he says, look, uh, essentially, there's a difference between possibility and probability. Um, there's a difference between being able to observe something and um, and and actually uh, knowing that something is there. So the story goes something like this. Um, suppose I told you that right now there was a teapot and this teapot was orbiting somewhere around Mars and it would be too small for us to see it with our telescopes but it's possible that the teapot is there and I believe in this teapot, right? Uh, this happens very often when people talk about extraordinary claims. They say, well, it's still possible that this happened, right? Well, it's possible that there's this teapot in orbit around Mars. Um, it's true that it's possible that the teapot is in orbit around Mars, but what reason do we have for thinking that there is such a teapot? Well, there isn't really one, right? It would be odd to get one out there somebody would have had to shoot something to Mars, would have had to be some kind of space mission. Somebody would know something about it. Um, it just seems super unlikely. And so you'll find that um, when we look at some extraordinary claims, um, claims say about Bigfoot, right? Uh, it's possible that there is an unknown hominid rolling around the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Could there be a Bigfoot? Well, I guess, you know, it's logically possible that there could be something out there. Sure, sure, it's possible. But is it probable? Is there anything that actually recommends it beyond just the mere possibility? And what we find is, question isn't do we want to believe something um, the question is is there sufficient evidence to believe something all right you may want to believe something i may want to believe that tomorrow i'm going to win the lottery but is there any reason to think that i actually will um, if if the if you have a good amount of evidence then um, yeah, you can conclude that, that something does exist or the claim is true and the better proof that you have, the more reliance you can put upon it. So um, if somebody actually delivers to me the corpse of a Bigfoot and it has uh, Bigfoot DNA, then I'm in a better position to believe that Bigfoot exists. But if somebody just gives me the story of a miner from a hundred years ago who was in the woods and he was abducted by, you know, uh, some Bigfoots or something like that. Well, that's, that's not quite as good, you know. I can't rely on that evidence quite as strongly. And so it still may be true that there are Bigfoots out there, but it's just that the burden of proof hasn't yet been made. This is an important point and I'll end on it. I'm not here to tell you whether you are psychic or your aunt or your grandmother is. I don't know. Um, but whether or not um, there's been enough evidence in a laboratory setting to conclude beyond you know, a shadow of a doubt that there are psychic abilities, no, there, there hasn't been. There still may be psychics out there. I don't know the history of the world. I haven't quizzed every single person. I don't know but there's not enough positive evidence for me to believe it, right? So I'm not saying, no, there are no psychics, because that in and of itself would be a claim. Instead, I'm just sort of saying, well, there's not enough evidence to believe it, right? Okay, that's just a sort of 50,000 foot view of the course. I tried to speak as quickly as possible and as clearly as possible, but I don't know if it made any sense at all. So. Um, uh, thank you very much and move on down to the next video.